Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to work our way through this week's TV news, we'll do pilots, reveals, cancellations, series orders, all that kind of thing, maybe a bit of casting here or there, or I don't know, some spacey, if something comes up, I don't know, probably not. That's quite a meaty amount though this week. Uh, really? It's as healthy looking, I, I wasn't, I, I thought it was kind of light and then I checked what day I was on when I was working my way back through the week for news and I realised I was only on Wednesday and I was like, oh, it's was off a couple of days, maybe this will actually be quite busy so hmm. here we are we're gonna, we're gonna get cracking uh first things first um three of the four apple originals that launched last week now i know there was like some non-fiction stuff and whatever but out of the four dramas that launched um three of them have been renewed for all mankind's been renewed c has been renewed and dickinson's been renewed so uh worth noting that the the other one the, the morning show i think that was already two seasons uh, as it was uh, that sounds right, but the other three all just got renewed this week. So yeah, but I think they're all getting a second season. They're feeling happy, I guess, about these, even though the critical buzz has not been exactly, you know, over the moon. But, no, no, it hasn't. But they have nothing to compare them to, really. <laughs> this is this is the first batch of shows. They have no barometer internally yet for them. So I guess we'll just make them look successful yeah they're all getting season two so just you know. i think it's an optics thing more than anything right yeah. like hey throw some money at it if we go hey look you, you like these shows assuming people do we're, we're committed to bringing you more of this i guess it just looks good for subscribers sake yeah yeah uh so these are all coming back for more um next year maybe i, I don't know I, I don't know if apple's going to be uh stricter with the yearly schedule because it's a weekly weekly style like a lot of cable networks or if it's yeah. going to be more of a a, I, a sliding scale of a schedule like I think uh, ultimately it depends on how many shows they end up you know having ready to go at a time because i don't think they want to overdo themselves with content if you know they don't want to put out like you know 10 shows a week but maybe they want to keep a certain number and they'll just you know do whatever they can to, to kind of keep that going uh yeah maybe I, I'd, I'd be more concerned about uh this the show's being produced in time rather than them having too much on the schedule, at least for a while. I don't think they're going to be hitting that problem for at least a year. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, it, with it being weekly content for the most part, and we, uh, do you remember how many goddamn shows they had in development? Yeah, but I mean, if a lot of them don't start for a while, yeah. and they start on different nights, I mean, maybe they'll get to the point where they have, you know, a couple of shows get out every day, and that's that's true. At the minute, want. is it everything just on the same day? Because I know about all, you know, launch day and then it was, you know, okay, next week. But I don't know if it was spread out from there or if it's just all on the, the same day, the Friday or whatever it was. I don't know. Um, I do know the next thing that's launching that we're going to talk about a little bit uh, is launching on a Thursday. So at least other stuff's going to be on different days. But all the stuff that launched, all launched on the Friday, obviously. I don't know if they changed what day they were the following yeah. week. Uh, but yeah, so they've all been renewed. So if you like them and... Some of you may have. <laughs> I mean, For All Mankind was actually pretty decent, and I, I'm still wanting to kind of watch more of it, but um, yeah. it's not been a and point in viewing. Uh, Dickinson, like, the, there are things that people really like in that show, and then there are some things that they don't. So it's it's, it's mixed, but uh, there are a lot of positive things that people like about it overall. Uh, next up, uh, I mean, there's a, obviously there's sometimes there's renewals and cancellations that we don't cover just because they're things that are not related to us. And this one is kind of in that ballpark, but uh, it isn't notable for one reason. Uh, Fresh off the boat has been is, is going to end with its sixth season. There'll be no season seven. Uh, the reason why this is notable, if you recall the controversy uh, last year when it was renewed for season six, and Constance Wu uh, basically threw a fit because she was hoping it'd get cancelled because she's got movie projects lined up because her stardom's taken off. So, and I just thought it was mildly notable that she got her way just one season later. So, probably a, when a contract was coming to an end. Uh, very possible. Apparently, the ratings have not exactly been great either. So, I mean, there's other reasons other than just her yeah, wanting okay. to leave, but uh, I assume she's probably. I mean, if she just kept her mouth shut for one more year. <laughs> No one would she have had any come that. off looking a little bit petty. Yeah, that bad buzz she got from that from that reaction. Yeah, uh, I can't imagine how awkward this last season's been on set. Like, I don't know if like because a lot of those other actors and the crew members will rely on that show for a job, and she's like, "Oh, I want out of this now because I've got other offers, got better things to do." Yeah, so yeah. I can't imagine, but I want to mention it. 
Uh, next up, uh, CW has set uh, mid-season premiere dates for a bunch of stuff. Uh, one of which we care about. The others are just kind of there for, you know, completion for sake. For completion sake, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, where are we? Where are we? Right. So, Riverdale spin-off Katie Keen, uh, starring Lisa Hale. Uh, is going to premiere on Thursdays. It's uh, Thursday, February sixth. Uh, that's going to go to premiere. So, uh, in tradition with a lot of uh, their the, the fall, where they're kind of a little bit later than everyone else, it seems like their mid-season shows are even going to be a lot. You know, they're going to be in start of February as opposed to in January for some. Yeah, I think returning shows are kind of more to- usually more towards oh, the middle are. of January. They are. Um, Legacies is also uh, on Thursdays at 9. I don't know if that's still on Thursdays or if that's starting mid-season Thursdays. The wording's a little bit weird there. Uh, I'm sure people who watch that know if it's on already. <laughs> so I would hope so. <laughs> so, I don't imagine they're worried about it. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow, which is what we do care about. Uh, this is an interesting one in terms of the wording here, because it sounds like it's taking a week off the week after it comes back. <laughs> because of Arrow. So, stay with me. So, it's coming back on Tuesday, January 21st at 9pm, right? Yep. Makes sense. That's kind of where we might have expected it, just based on... Well, no, we might have expected it to replace Black Lightning on the Monday, but it's replacing Arrow on the Tuesdays, basically. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, it also, I also, I guess that means Flash isn't coming back until the week after Arrow finishes, but regardless, right, that's that's the conversation for later. Uh, so, it's coming January 21st, 9pm. Uh, which is after an 8pm episode of Arrow, which is the ninth episode, because the following week, on the 28th, is the finale episode of Arrow, which is getting two hours, not because the episode is two hours, though, and I had to really read this wording properly to really... It's a two-hour event. The second hour is the finale. The first hour is an Arrow finale special or something, so I don't think it's like an actual episode, I think it's just... Yeah, right. Here's a, like a documentary saying goodbye to Arrow, and then the second hour is Arrow actually in its finale. Which yeah, to, I've which, seen these things before. Yeah, which to me says that Legends has taken that week off, and it sounds like Flash isn't even coming back until probably that first week in February. What's interesting is I know in either the week Legends come back, I actually thought it was a week earlier, is the dates for the, the second half of the Crisis stuff in January. Yes. So I wonder which shows are in that. Because uh, obviously we know at least two of the episodes are, are in that part, right? Yeah, uh, two of them are coming after Christmas, yeah. Yeah, so I wonder which ones it is that are, that are doing that. Uh, I mean, we don't we what, assume well, Legends. Well, one of them is Legends. They confirmed that. They confirmed which yeah. ones were which. I just can't remember off the top okay, of my head. Fair enough. Um, I, I, I thought it was the week before that you just said that uh, Legends was starting, but I, maybe I'm just misremembering. Well, maybe it is. Maybe they're not counting that as the mid-season return. No, uh, maybe not, yeah. Uh, which makes sense, because it's not really... It's episode yet, like it's it's just a part of the crisis. It's not really the show's yeah yeah that season that yet. Makes sense. Uh, so yeah, so it looks like Flash is coming back a little bit later, which I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna not gonna be upset about it. My liver will appreciate that. So there you go. Um, yeah. Um, so do 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 do. Uh, Right. Uh, March 9th is when Black Lightning and All American will have their season finales. Uh, that's So that's March 9th. Uh, so I guess that's why it's not replacing Black Lightning, because Black Lightning's still on for a little while uh, yeah, until it's done. Yeah, probably a little, maybe a little bit later than I expected, but not super late. I just, uh, I, I think I, w- I was expecting it to end uh, more towards the middle of February, so yeah, it was a couple of weeks later than I'd guessed. Well, I mean, usually they get to about nine episodes, maybe ten before Christmas. If they've got three or four left, they start uh, end of January. If they take one week off for some reason, mm, yeah, it's not, it's not that much to get to the start of, start of March. It's not, no. Uh, so, there you go. So that was just that. And then one other thing to note is that Supernatural's moving to Monday nights. And why is this notable? Why am I even mentioning this? Why do I care? Mm. Uh, the reason why I mention this is because it's the first show in CW history which has complete completed a clean sweep meaning that it is aired monday through friday it's aired in all of those nights at one point during its run so they're, they're just getting that by this this last half of their final season is moving to monday completing the clean sweep of all five main this, nights this would be way more impressive if they didn't start airing on sundays like two years ago uh, that was only last year so but... only last year okay if, if it had you know if, if they'd held off on that sunday night until this had <laughs> ended then then i go okay that's impressive now i'm like if didn't get the sundays Ah, cause Sunday's still the extra one, though. It's, it's not, it doesn't feel like part of the real week yet. 
I, I know, I know. Even even though they air like two of their big shows on it. So, uh, yeah, so that was uh, CW mid-season stuff. Uh, next up, uh, speaking of finale events and uh, extras and whatnot, uh, NBC's given The Good Place a big finale uh, event. Uh, it's going to get a 90-minute block for its final episode, although the whole thing won't be the episode. The episode will be, it'll be an extra long episode because it's obviously only 30 minutes, including ads. Uh, presumably the episode will be an hour, uh, the finale, and then they're going to do a, a special with Seth Meyers where the full cast will be there uh, for an interview. So... Yeah. Okay. Given Is that the, the end of the show? Yeah, it's the end of the show. It's the final yeah, season so. this year. Uh, so that's... Uh, uh, what, 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 why wouldn't the date be in this? Oh yeah, there you go. January 30th. <laughs> Put that at the start of your paragraph, you dicks. Like, <laughs> don't, don't make me look for it. <laughs> Bad for mine. Jan- January 30th for that. Uh, next up, NBC has unveiled uh, its... Uh, mid-season stuff. The one of which we care about is Brooklyn Nine-Nine, uh, of course. It's 13 episodes, 7th season that is going to premiere on February 6th. Um, so... Yeah, I saw a picture they tweeted out. It looked like they were doing a, a Die Hard th- episode for it. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Again, yes. I know. <laughs> I mean, maybe they were just, you know, playing with it, but it, I'm not the, complaining. the image they were tweeting was a, a new looking thing to me. I'm not going to complain about it. I just, you know, it's just, is that, that is that the first time they have uh, referenced Die Hard? No, 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 it's not. Probably won't be the last either. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Um, it'd be interesting to see if that gets renewed again, uh, or if this is going to be the final season. They've, they've not said anything to that effect. I'm just, it's curious because uh, season six got extra episodes, and I, I assumed at the time that season seven might even be a full, you know, 22, maybe the full, the full yeah, whack. Um... But it isn't. So I'm curious. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably not the final season because I think they'd want to get out ahead of it and and mm. say we're ending it rather than cancelling it. I think that given given you know what happened last time, I mean that maybe, would just look so much better for them. Yeah, maybe NBC see it as a very reliable mid season show because obviously not everything they they pick up in the fall is going to stick around uh, for the second half of the season. So maybe that's just a very reliable mid season sort of replacement they can bring yeah, in. It's a guaranteed thing to hit in its core audience. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So that's coming, uh, February 6th. Uh, next up, we had a trailer for, uh, Apple's next show that's launching, at least the next big one we care about, uh, which is, uh, end of November here, November 28th, I believe is the date. Um, so this is, uh, the Shyamalan TV show called Servant. And we got a full two plus minute trailer of this this week. And I was not prepared for it to remind me so much of a certain movie film uh, that one Timothy Vargulish happens to be very fond of, uh, because the plot is very reminiscent of The Boy, in that a nanny is hired for a a toy, fake baby. Uh, the difference here, compared to that movie, though, is that the mother in this, uh, you know, of the of the the the, the doll is actually kind of crazy and thinks it's real <laughs> and is like kind of because something bad happened to the real baby and this is how she's coping toby kebble you know victor von doom uh he's the the, the, the husband rupert grint's in there as well as one of his friends seemingly uh there seems to be a bit of a mystery element as to what actually happened to the baby and how they don't actually want want the wife to remember exactly it, it felt to me like the, the baby because you say oh yeah we lost the baby like 13 weeks mm. and and more just the wife kind of just snapped and lost it and this was a you know it was is a coping mechanism and she just believes it now no 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 no. there was a line later on the trailer that hinted there was more okay it, it, it was it was literally a line that said uh, you don't want her to remember yeah i just took that as in you don't want her to remember because she won't be able to take it again oh yeah but it was you don't you want her to remember what really happened it was that phrase really happened that i don't know oh, it, yeah, it sounded so... like it was it, nah, it sounded like it was hitting that mystery, that there was like something that the husband actually wanted to hide, beyond just wanting her to not feel bad. Sure, I mean, you could be right. Uh, and it's Shyamalan, are you really going to suggest no, there's not going to be no, twists? there's going to be a twist. At least one. Yeah, so... I'm intrigued, I don't know if... Like, there's a lot of tight close-ups in this, there's a lot of uh, shallow depth of field that's doing that sort of uncomfortable, like, in-your-face kind of shooting style. I thought it felt really generic. I mean, I guess it does a bit. I, I I don't know. Like, I don't know. I was watching. It just felt like I was going through the motions with the trailer. I, I mean, I can't argue with that too much, but it feels more interesting to me than I don't know all the other trailers we watch. Yeah, fair enough. I'd much rather watch this than 
Katie Keene episode one. I mean, <laughs> sure, but <laughs> that's, that's not really a fair comparison. I don't know. It looks it looks better than C. I don't know, actually. I feel like I have a lot of similar complaints as to... Uh, as I you have to, similar to complaints to C. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Uh, what is the similar complaints you have from this and C? Just how, you know, at first I'm like, oh, okay, this could be interesting. You know, the, the C, the, I'm saying specifically the trailer here, mm-hmm. not the episode. Uh, you know, my, my thoughts of the trailer at the start, I'm like, okay, this could be interesting. It looks all right. And then as it went on, I just, I went, nah, this looks really generic and kind of boring. And I, I, I had the same feeling watching this trailer. Am I, am I just being incredibly negative on this one? I don't know. Uh, wait, were you talking about the C trailer? Not, not, not the... Yeah, yeah, the trailer. Okay, but right. I, I did just specify that, like, twice. I thought you meant this trailer. No, no, both. Trailer versus trailer. Okay, like, trailer versus I'm trailer. All right. Trailer. Um, yeah, I, don't, I mean, the trailer's pretty, you know, typical thriller kind of things are ramping up. Uh, maybe revealing too much. Uh, but the Shun style did make it feel a bit more distinct to me. And... I don't know. Fair enough. I'm down for a pilot. I mean, <laughs> why not? Why not? No Tiger Free from uh, Tool to Die Young's in there. Yes. And more people probably know from Game of Thrones, but sure. Why did I even know she was on that? So why, why, why would I, why would I go to that? We talked about that when we did the reviews for Tool to Die Young. Why so would I remember that, though? Think, Really think about this. I don't know. You could just pay attention. It wouldn't stick in my mind. It's never, it's never oh. really stick. I have nothing visual to to attach it to. You saw her in that show. Did I? She must have been yeah. like seven. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she was around earlier on. And what age was she in season one of the show? Did she? She was young. Eight years ago, she's like twenty right now, which means she was what twelve, maybe. Still thirteen. Yeah, that sounds about right. And you, th- you, you think I was going to place her face when you said she was in Game of Thrones to, for, to her 13-year-old self that probably looks very, very different to her current face. Uh, all I'm saying is we've spoken about this before. <sighs> there's, there's a trigger there. Oh, my God. Um, that's, uh, that's Servant. Uh, uh, next up was a title change from one of the NBC shows coming up, uh, one of the mid-season shows. So, you know, we're getting a Bone Collector show that was called Lincoln. Because that's you know the name of the the main cop who's lying in the bed yeah. and helping the other cop investigate things. The rookie. Um, so now they've ca- now they're calling it Lincoln Rhyme Colon Hunt for the Bone Collector. Uh, they went from generic name like you know as in character mm-hmm. name to what the hell that now you, now you're just a book title again. Yeah. Also, like I mean. They were determined to get Bone Collector out of the title, which honestly it makes me go, well, just call the Bone Collector that. It can be the Bone Collector TV show. It's not, no one's going to be confused. Or it's like, if anything, it's like, oh, there's a TV show, because it sounds like they're going to do the plot of the movie anyway. So just call it the Bone Collector. I, I don't think any of us would have, you know, really held it against that for using that name, right? The, the only way this might work is if, like, season two has a different subtitle. You know, it's, it's Lincoln Rhyme Hunt for the. And they have a different killer. Sure. Then it might work. And I, you know, in an overall sense. Do you know what, my, what really bugs me about all this is everyone's just going to call it Lincoln anyway. No, nah, probably they'll call, call it the Bone Collector because that's what the movie was called. They won't if they change it after season, if they change the, the subtitle. For okay, sh- sure. But right now it's the Bone Collector TV show and it's going to be that for at least a season. It is, yeah. Assuming people remember the Bone Collector, and I barely do, to be honest. Like, I, I, you know, I saw it when it came out, but it wasn't super memorable. No, it was hardly a big, big movie. You know, you had a couple of notable actors in there. Uh, next up, so uh, we got a new showrunner on Jupiter Legacy, or Jupiter's Legacy. Sorry, uh, Sain Kim has been named a new showrunner uh, after the departure uh, of Stephen S. The Knight, which is obviously a bummer because he's he's been pretty good pretty good in the past of course he worked on the hit television show buff of the vampire slayer uh, earlier in his career so uh yeah so yes uh the night left uh halfway through the eight episode first season's production so uh so four episodes had, had finished filming when he left do we know why he left was it a, a scheduled thing or something else came up or just uh, 
create... listed listed here is creative differences. Uh, that's never a good sign. Nope. So, uh, not not super pumped about that. And then speaking of showrunners, the next story we have is that John Spates has stepped down from Dune: The Sisterhood. He will Problems remain already. Yeah, he will remain executive producer. Uh, and although that, that's maybe sounds a little bit different because it sounds because it, it says here he's going to focus on writing the script for the feature film, obviously the villain is going to do. So I wonder if this was just uh, he felt his his attention was being split and wanted to yeah. focus on the movie script uh, rather than being creative differences or anything sort of. Yeah, I didn't realize he was working on both already. So yeah, I mean we probably spoke about it you know way back, but I, I didn't remember that. Um, so I mean yeah, I mean. Maybe this is all right. Yeah, that might not be such bad news, and it's early enough that maybe this is just like, nah, like I'm, I'm going to focus on what I need to. This is and earlier in production than the last one by a considerable margin. Yes, so uh, not necessarily a problem sign there. But uh, mm. uh, next up is some casting here for the Halo TV show, cool. which honestly the the casting itself is not that interesting. Uh, I just thought I'll remind everyone as a Halo TV show because I feel like it's been like a year since we heard anything about it. Yeah, it had its showrunner change. I think that was the last time we spoke about it. Yeah. Uh, Danny Sapani from Penny Dreadful has been cast in it, as is Olive Gray from Half Moon Investigations and Charlie Murphy from Peaky Blinders. Uh, they've all been cast as series regulars opposite Pablo Schreiber uh, and Halo. Schreiber being, I assume he's the Master Chief. I assume so. Yeah. I don't really recall. Uh, so, yeah, this is still showtime, but it's still happening. I mean, honestly, we've been hearing about this on and off for about three years at this point, so I'll believe it when I actually see a trailer. <laughs> but... That's fair. I, I will say they did actively acknowledge that it was getting delayed when the showrunner change happened. Um, So, you know, they were like, okay, with this, we are pushing it back. I think they said by a year. So I didn't expect to hear anything immediately after that. Um, This still feels like, okay, it's chugging along at least. I feel like there's so many like adaptations of things, like especially video games, that just kind of keep getting pushed and then wither and kind of disappear. Mm. So, true. and maybe this will be the first one, that, the big one that really happens. I mean, I mean, well, not that really happens. Witcher's happening already, but you know what I mean. Like the first one that kind of has this seemingly this problematic production, but then does it eventually materialize into a big budget TV show. Yeah, it uh, could happen. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so there you go. So that's all I'm going to say. There is, there is a little descriptions for the cast members, but I'm not going to... <laughs> Did it just say who they were cast as? Uh, Gray will play Dr. Miranda Keyes, Sapani will play Captain Jacob Keyes, and Murphy will play uh, Makey. No okay. Do you know any of those names? Do those mean things uh, to you? Definitely the Keys. yeah, both of those. Okay. All right, so what are the new shows then? We're at the comedies. Uh, so we'll start off with NBC. Uh, they're giving a pilot commitment to Friends and Family, a comedy from writer Sean Wayne's Will Arnett's Electric Avenue, and Aaron Kaplan's Capital Entertainment. <laughs> I'm just laughing because we we were joking last week that we would just know his company's name now. We just know Aaron, Aaron Kaplan and Capital Entertainment. It's ingrained in our brains. Uh, so written by Wayne's Friends and Family, a group of twenty-something friends in San Francisco question what they will really what they really want out of life as they try to hold on to their carefree lives while facing the next phase of adulthood. So it's friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, 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 and family. I mean, they're not describing any family in there, so all I can see that, is... That was, what was the title again? Friends and family. Well, there you go. And family. They claim family, but I think that's because they'll get sued by, by uh, Warner Brothers over friends. Which, let's not forget, they were also friends, and some of them were family. <laughs> Two of them, yeah, two, there was brother and sister in there, yes. So, yes, they yeah. were literally family, even before some of them started getting married. So, yeah. um... No one told you life was going to be this way. I, I mean, unto every generation. There is a chosen sex? <laughs> there is a friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it, it feels like there's always... Yeah, obviously, you had friends, and then... Because How I Met Your Mother really marked itself on, hey, we're the next friends, right? And this immediately feels like we're just friends again, but we're now. Yeah. NBC does tend to do better with comedies, though, so. Yeah. Maybe it'll, it'll be okay. Um, and I, I think Friends did here on NBC, to be fair. Like, I'm not, I'm not ignoring that fact, but Warner Brothers do on the show, I believe. Because I think it's going to be on HBO Max uh, once all that kicks off. 
Uh, next up, ABC is developing a half-hour single-camera comedy written and headlined by the New Normal and Vice Principal star Georgia King from Lorne Michaels' Broadway video. The romantic comedy centers on Martha and Charlie, two strangers who live one street apart and have no idea they're soulmates. The show follows their journey to finding each other, which is complicated, funny, and full of surprises. Is it really? <laughs> but... <laughs> just, I don't know. Find that hard to believe. I, I mean, I mean, how many sitcoms are about two single people who are going to get together? where that's the actual sole focus of the show that definitely has to happen. Because obviously a lot of them are just a group of friends and they'll be a will they won't they early on and then they'll break up for a long time and then they'll get back together towards the end of the show. Sometimes multiple times. I mean, if we go back to Fred's again, Ross and Rachel, like we built to that. They were together for like a season and a half and then they broke up, were, you know, on a break, all that nonsense. And, uh, and then it was a while with nothing, then a little bit of a fling and then a long time with nothing. The weird second relationship that no one liked and then... For the finale, all of a sudden, hey, they're soulmates again because everyone cared about that relationship back at the start, so we're going to end the show with them together, even though they've went through all that stuff. Because shows just are obsessed with not keeping people together for long periods of time. Yeah, they, they, they think it's boring. For whatever reason. But I'm not, I'm not saying I think it's boring. They, they think that, writers, for whatever reason. If writers reason, they... need to break up couples to do interesting stories, then I'm sorry... You're, you you need to expand what you write about because you're not yeah. doing it properly. How my mother didn't do too... You know, in terms of, okay, that, that, that's kind of what the whole show is about, right? Is, okay, we have to meet the mother. Uh, that didn't do too bad because you had, you know, the, the, the married know. couple. In, in the sense that you had a married couple there for most of the show. There was like like maybe six, seven episodes over the end of yeah, the Yeah, but, the, but the, main, the main thing we started with was a uh, main dude and... Uh, and Robin, yeah. Robin, that's her name. No, no, I agree, and right? it came back to that. I'm. I'm not saying that's not. I was. I was highlighting the other married. And then she even. The then she even. Yeah. Well, there was another married couple on Friends too. Like it's, it's not like the other shows. I'm saying the main thing they tease in season one yeah. is the one they go back and forth on. It is. Or yeah. the whole show, right? Yeah. That point stands. You're incorrect. <laughs> I was defending that. <laughs> you were giving me a pointless example that meant nothing to what I was saying. I was giving you a of something that was there for the entire show, not just, okay, you know, like in Pointless. Friends, where there was a marriage halfway through. Pointless. Yeah, it's very professional of you. Pointless, and you want to go home. All right. Uh, <laughs> next up. <What> <laughs> <laughs> ABC has got another comedy. Uh, Given a script commitment plus penalty to... Flowis, this is F L O U I S, all caps. So, so it's an agri- uh, Sorry? Flowis? Flowis? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so, mother son multi camera comedy uh, from upcoming duo of actor writer Brendan Scannell and writer Amy Reed. Uh, where are we? So, uh, Flewis is revolves around an extravagant fake Caldwell who has spent her life living the high rolling Vegas sugar daddies, or living off high rolling Vegas sugar daddies rather. Um, but when her pool of men finally runs dry, she and her codependent adult son Lewis uh, trade their stilettos for a fresh start in their hometown of Basic Indiana. Basic Indiana. Could, could we not have? Th- <laughs> Jesus Christ! Could we not have thought of, like? <laughs> Look, I get it. If this is a real place, and it may be a real place in Indiana, I get the temptation to use it. But here's the thing. Don't use it because you want something... That you, it's just too on the nose. It's too on also, the nose. if it is a real place, Indiana, do better. <laughs> yeah, but maybe it's named after like some French that's like, Basique, right? <laughs> Basique, they Indiana. Renamed that, like, they should have renamed that decades ago. Yes. Um, it never actually says what this this uh, title stands for. Uh, it's it's like a, a relation a shipping name. It Faye sounds like and it, yeah. Lewis. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His name's Lewis, so yeah, the F must come from her. Yeah, yeah, yeah Faye. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a shipping name for a mother, a mother and son, which isn't creepy at all. Yeah, all right, all right, ABC. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what they've been doing? They've been looking at the porn websites and see, seeing what's a hit with people right now, and they're going, you know what? Mother <laughs> sons, they're, they're in. I feel like this is a case of like <laughs> the broadcaster misunderstanding like the point of these names. Like there was a fantastic thing this week with the BBC trying to explain shit posting. 
and getting it gloriously wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and it was delightful. Uh, I feel like this might be a similar sort of idea where they thought, oh, it's it's like this harmless little friendly thing, you know, mm. and then not having actually realized the connotations. All right, next up, uh, ABC again, NAB the Comedy. Uh, where are we? It's called Freedom. It's a multi-camera comedy from writer-producer Suzanne Martin, Sean Hayes, and Todd Milner's Hazy Mills. In Freedom, written by Martin, five very different women are chosen for early release from an overcrowded Florida prison. Now what? Short and to the point. <laughs> I can appreciate that. You know what? Especially with a comedy. Yeah, I'll give them. I'll give them credit for this. I feel like that that one sentence. Well, technically two. That last those last two words are technically a new sentence, but you know what? Same difference, right? This one sentence told me more about the premise of this than all these ones talking about relationships and families living together. Like, no, no, no. This gave me a, a like simple thing. It's about five people who just got out of prison, all women. That's all you need. That's your premise. Go. Yeah, it's kind of going to be a friendship group thing, like you know, like half the other ones, because mm -hmm. it's. I, I think it's unlikely it's going to end up as a workplace with them all at the same place. The question is though, to go to, to so they can air it in the same night as Flois, uh, are all five of them in prison because they all had sex with a son? <laughs> that, that would be quite extreme. <laughs> they're, they're in the uh, the. What, what would you call that club? <laughs> Uh, I, I do not want to try and create that name. <laughs> the ABC can call it the incest block. <laughs> uh, they, they're really going after that Game of Thrones audience. Uh, oh dear. Uh, next up, Fox. Fox is in the comedy as well. They've put in development G-Men, a multi-camera comedy from writer Luke Cunningham, uh, who is on tonight's show starring Jimmy Fallon uh, and Austin Earl, happy together, uh, along with 20th Century Fox TV. So, G-Men follows two estranged brothers who both claim to be government agents, even though one is a hardcore FBI agent and the other is a part-time mailman. <laughs> oh, I'll give them the credit. That made me chuckle. So, I mean, they've got something going here. Uh, yeah. They struggle to put their vast differences aside when they reunite to help their larger-than-life mother move, move on after the death of their father. They hate... They hate this new arrangement at first, but ultimately they realize that sometimes it's the people you agree with the least who inspire you to be your best. I got less interest as it went on. Yeah, I want to know more about this. Like, so one of them's actually an FBI agent, and the other one is just a mailman, but he likes to pretend. Like, I'm I'm almost getting like Cliff from Cheers mm. vibes, but his brother happens to be an actual FBI agent. Yeah. I don't... Like, like that angle of it sounded kind of fun, but then the rest of it just got a bit generic comedy description-y. I like the idea, though, that the one who's really an agent can't tell anyone he's an agent, so his brother doesn't actually know he's really an agent. He thinks he's also faking it. Maybe, yeah. Which gets into some real murky grounds where they're like, hey, you're not allowed to tell anyone you're an agent. Well, no, no, no. I was pretending that I was faking being an agent. There's a difference. I'm double bluffing them. I'm double <laughs> bluffing them. <laughs> <laughs> I right. feel like this is way better in our heads than it's ever going to be. Uh, yeah, most likely. Uh, and speaking of, CBS is developing Extended Family, a multi camera comedy from Mum and Bob. Uh, sorry, Mum is one show, and then Bob Hart's uh, Abishola creators, Eddie Grodeski and Warner Brothers TV. So, yes. Anyway. Okay, there's a, there's a bullshit paragraph before the actual description. Be consistent, deadline. Be consistent. So, Red is introduced by uh, Grodeski. Extended family is an unconventional family ensemble comedy. A brother and sister are at ground zero when a family secret sends shockwaves through an already dysfunctional family. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of family buzzwords. The word family was in those two sentences. That, that two sentence description had the word family three times. Too many. <laughs> that's like... At least two times too many. Yes. Uh, if, if family's in your title, you cannot use the word family for the rest of your description. No, no, no. I think you can use it once. So it's one time too many then. You said it was in there three times. Were you including the title in that? Oh, no, it's there four times including the title. Yeah. So... I just double checked. There's four times including the title. Yeah. I stand by what I said. Okay. I'll do. All right. Uh, CW, who don't normally do comedies, traditionally. 
is it interesting or or do i just not care oh i mean <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that for uh the, the, the following judgment uh, CW has put in development a friends comedy <laughs> from <laughs> Hannah Marks who worked it's on Dirk Gently's movie, Holistic Detective Energy and Ben Stiller's uh, Red Hour uh, from No Tomorrow creator okay, Corrine uh, Binkerhoff the untitled Hannah Marks project written by Marks is, is a five minutes into the future comedic drama about four female friends navigating their 20s the show explores classic coming-of-age themes including love, friendship, identity, and sexuality all through the futuristic high-tech lens. It's Friends, the CW version. <laughs> also, that actually said comedic drama, so I'm not sure this is a sitcom. It did. Uh, look, look, I'm not going to pretend I read this before I, I started this video, okay? <laughs> I saw the headline that said comedy, and I put it in the comedy section, okay? I, don't think, that's a, I think that's a fair mistake to make. If you say so. Look. <laughs> it's, a, it's a comedy, damn it. Um, we're still... Uh, we still... No, we're not. Okay, so, that is the end of the comedies. Which yep. it was. Slash the start of the dramas. <laughs> no, it's the end of the comedies. Uh, so I'm going to take this moment of time uh, to thank our producers, our Patreon producers, um, who I will list as all it follows. Uh, David Short, Alison M. Fordis, Cindy Palacios, Tyler Hess, and Talking Superman. Uh, those are all patrons who are at the $20 or above tier on Patreon. Patreon.com slash TV, of course. If you want to go there, you can support us for as little as $1 per month, and you get bonus episodes of a couple of our podcasts. You get uh, some deleted outtakes of, like, you know, tangents that don't fit the episodes that we recorded them in, and other little bits and pieces. And then at the $5 tier, you get voting rights and other stuff as well, of course, higher up. Uh, so go and have a look if you want to keep all the content coming coming and support us for all the various things we do if you're a fan so uh, go do that but yes dramas um this is the, the official start of the drama section despite what cw tries to pull um so or deadline in their wording maybe more accurately it's deadline's fault I, I, i'm not sure that was cw's fault they they did a perfectly valid description and you just put it in the wrong section shut up adam scott is teaming up with ben stiller for a workplace thriller called severance which has been handed a series order by apple so apple ordering more shows not even a pilot i i, I got a little bit less excited by the end of that sentence <laughs> uh the parson rex uh and big little lies actor is to start and produce in the drama series which will be directed and executive produced by escape from uh denimora director ben stiller okay we didn't watch that but that got a lot of buzz did i didn't know he directed that no i vaguely knew that but sam esmail was uh raving about it so he was he was which is why i cared in the first place and we so, found out about it so less despite the word apple being mentioned this just shot back up a little bit it's uh let's get it up there it's recovering it's recovering from that 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 first part uh so and these two worked together in the secret life of water may uh previously which was a decent movie actually um so the series takes place uh, at Lumen Industries, a company that's looking to take the work-life balance, <laughs> work-life, personal no, and professional. <laughs> I, that, that's that's a little too vague. Just saying okay. the balance. If okay. it goes into either of them, I'll I'll do it. Okay, work-life balance to the level. Scott will play the lead role of Mark, an employee with a dark past trying to put himself back together. Uh, series is written and created by Dan Erickson, who worked in series development of Super Deluxe, uh, and is written by Spike's Lip Sync Battle pre-show, and is written for, sorry, uh, Spike's Lip, Lip Sync Battle pre-show. Uh, so, interesting mix of names here, but uh, Ben Stiller is directing this, and he's actually a pretty decent director, and Adam Scott I like as an actor, so, I mean, there's a lot of things here to be on board about. A um, little bit trepidatious because it's Apple, and so far I've not been impressed, but... Mm. Hmm. Just, it, it, just the thought of using their service more is is irritating. I mean, in theory, like it's it's entirely possible that once they've found found their uh, their their, their foot in a little bit, that in a few years' time, Apple might really be competing with everyone else. It's just right now, it's like ah, they're just shaky out the gate. They, and... they just didn't come swinging out the gate, yeah. Which, yeah. to be fair, I don't think anyone else really did either. I mean. I think it's especially worse for Apple though because they don't make content. This is the first time they've made content. <laughs> so it has, at least it, with Disney, like they already make stuff all the time. So it should hopefully feel a bit more polished. I, yeah, I feel like they're coming out the gate swinging, right? Because they know what they're doing. Uh, whether you, you happen to like a lot of their stuff or not, there is probably and a I level don't. of quality you can expect. 
maybe, maybe it's the tone that that will you know just feel like Disney stuff, and and Pete will be out. But, yes, so we're very close to. I mean, uh, Mandalorians uh, that going to be this week. It is, and I'm excited. I'm in. I've different. got my Mandalorian T-shirt all ready to go. Uh, I'm indifferent. I've got my uh, Death to the Porgs uh, T-shirt in my head. Hey, hey! Everyone knows Pogs are tasty. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so next up, Stars is working on a sequel series to Weeds. Uh, it's Showtime. Uh, okay. Well, well, oh, sorry. It was. It's not at Showtime. It's Stars, but the original series was on Showtime. Uh, so interesting little shift there, I guess, in that sense. But uh, it ran for eight seasons between 2005 and 2012. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I vaguely uh, remember seeing there was a working title for this. Is there? It, it was like Weeds 420. I, I guess like, that, Ugh, uh, really? I guess that makes sense. Yeah, this is basically like a light-hearted version of Breaking Bad where someone, like, her husband dies and she starts selling uh, drugs to, you know, fund their family, their big family. Yeah, I tried, like, <laughs> six episodes a, you know, well, a while ago now. While it was still on air, uh, I tried, like, the first six and I thought it was kind of boring. Yeah, it never appealed to me, but, I mean, I, I did have a fan base, so, I mean, if you're excited by this, then uh, there you go. Um, yeah. So and they're wanting to bring the the lead back, I believe. Uh, the way to bring yeah, uh, Liz Parker back. So, uh, so yeah. Um, next up, where are we here? Uh, Netflix has ordered uh, from scratch a new limited series starring an executive produced by Zoe Saldana, uh, based on a uh, Tembi Locke's best-selling memoir. It's coming from Reese Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine banner. So. Uh, From Scratch, published on April 30th by Simon & Schuster, uh, was selected as Reese's Book Club uh, X Hello Sunshine, or Cross Hello Sunshine, I suppose that's probably pronounced. Uh, It's weird, I'm so used to that just being like a a, a Japanese video game thing, using the X to mean cross, but in that sense it just sounded right to say it that way. So it's like that that whole uh, PlayStation debate like a couple of months ago with the controller. I mean, it's an X. Anyone who says cross is wrong. Yeah, yeah, it it is an X. Uh, So... From Scratch is a sweeping autobiographical romance that follows an American woman as she falls in love with a Sicilian man while studying abroad in Italy, then builds a life with him in the United States. When she unexpectedly loses him to illness, she is challenged to push to pull herself through grief so she can raise their daughter as they would have raised her together, with hope, joy, and infinite love. I suspect this is not for us. Yes, I also suspect that. Honestly, um, you know, at the start, you're like, oh, you know, limited series, uh, you know, and uh, who is in it? And I was like, okay. And then it said, you know, based on memoir, and I immediately got less interested because I immediately kind of had an idea of what to expect. Hmm. All right, next up, Amazon's unveiled a couple of new French originals. Uh, they've all, I mean, they've unveiled their own version of uh, Love Island for France, but we're not going to talk <laughs> about just that. just what France needs. We're going to talk about... Uh, about the other shows, uh, we're going to talk about uh, a period drama and a spy drama. So, uh, so f- forgive my pronunciation of this. Uh, Voltaire Mute. There's an X in there. I know you don't say X's properly if you're speaking Muto, in French. Probably. Muto. M I X T E. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Voltaire Mute. <laughs> Is my guess, but I'm probably wrong. Yeah, I, th- I think when I was there, I was guessing the X was at the end, not in the middle. I'd have to look at it. Yeah. Uh, it takes place in an all-male high school when women are allowed in for the first time. Set in 1960s France, the series will look at the relationships and the hormonal fireworks of the time. It will cover topics such as love, emancipation, sexuality, and self-acceptance. I assume this was probably a thing in France then in the 1960s. Like, they had them separated until then, maybe. Probably. Just in the yeah. context of this description. Uh, that or it was just a you know how some private schools were like one thing or the other and eventually sure. they kind of shifted and went okay we, we're open to both now so it was just that happened to be when this particular school changed. yeah possibly yeah uh so yeah it's essentially french <laughs> i'm good it really does yeah I'm, mm. i want to hard pass on that <laughs> and then the spy thriller is uh, operations totems is a love story <laughs> between two enemy spies from east berlin to paris uh, from North, Northern Africa to the USSR, the action thriller is set in 1965. An 60s show. I, I, do you know what? There's something about the 1960s that does feel very French. I feel like there's a lot of French things set in the 60s. Yeah, you might be right. 
So, uh, in the midst of the Cold War, this is, it follows uh, Francis uh, Mosery, a secret agent struggling to carry his legend of a father's mantle as he heads into the field for the first time and stumbles upon uh, Ludmilla. Ludmilla, a, a newly KGB. <laughs> in the middle of the cont uh, continuous illegal intelligence operations between the SDECE and the CIA, I, I'm going to assume SDECE is uh, Francis Service. Probably. Wait, 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 what was the acronym? S SD? SDECE. Is that Francis CIA? Yeah. It it definitely is. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Sure. <laughs> I, I know the, the CE is, is counter espionage, but in French. I can tell. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so they will struggle uh, for their countries and against the love they feel for each other. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Wee um, oui, wee. Oui. I, I can't think of anything less appealing than a romantic spy thriller than making it French. <laughs> I will leave it there. Yeah. We'll leave just, it there. Uh, just before we move on, yeah, we're, well, we're talking about Amazon mm -hmm. as, a, as a whole here. Um, the Boys Season 2 finished shooting uh, this week. Uh huh. Um, they're, they're expecting, you know, uh, late spring, early summer is, is what I'm, uh, I've been hearing. Uh, well, when did we get season uh, one? It was probably summer, right? It was towards the end of summer. So I think this was like it'll be less than a year, though, rather than mm -hmm. longer than, which is uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if Amazon are just like, hey, well, let's get it out while it's hot. Yeah, people seem to like it. Um, we liked it a lot, so. It's, I think it's like their most watched show. Uh, so next up, uh, BCDF Pictures has acquired the rights to Anthony Ryan's Penguin Random House fantasy book series, A Raven Shadow. Have you heard of this? I have not, but I want to. Good a TV series, they would develop it. Uh, Joseph Muzinski, uh, Peace, Love and Misunderstanding, oh. is adapting the first novel in the series, Blood Song, uh, which has sold more than one million copies worldwide, uh, with Claude Del Fara, uh, Bryce Del Fara, Brian Keady, and Ryan Executive Producing. So, um, here we go. Blood Song tells the story of Valin Al Sorna. Why is it always stupid names with these fantasy books? Uh, who at 10 was left by his father at the Iron Gate of the Sixth Order to be trained and hardened by the austere, celibate, sorry, by the austere, celibate and dangerous life of the warrior of the faith. Villain's father was a battle lord to King uh, Janus, or Janus maybe probably, but uh, ruler of the unified realm. I hate this so much. There's so I'm much into it. bullshit. Keep going. Having been abandoned, Valen, Valen is deprived of his birthright and his rage swelled. His cherished memories of his mother are soon challenged by what he learns within the Order. But one truth overpowers all the rest. Valen Alsorna is destined for a future he has yet to comprehend. One that will alter the world. Oh, he's got a destiny! He's got a destined future! What a surprise in a fantasy I, story! I'll be honest, I did not read that or it didn't sound to me as a as an old oh, fantasy destiny sort of thing more as he believes he has a destiny to do this because of who he is but i, I could be giving that the benefit of the doubt there i hate everything about what i've read here <laughs> can't wait to try it i hate everything i've read uh, it's gonna be a fantastic first episode review not for me not for me i'll say that right now uh, a lot of poppycock uh next up the CW has put in development Kung Fu, a reboot with a female lead of the 1970s David Carradine starring TV show. The project comes from Blindspot team of writer executive producer Chris, Christina M. Kim and creator executive producer Martin uh, Giro. Or Giro. I, I can't see a thing, single thing wrong with this yet. Soft G or hard G for that name? I'm not sure. How's it spelled? G E R O. I'd, I'd guess you. Oh. I'd go hard G if I was going to guess. What was the first name of them? Try, you're trying to guess a kind of area of the world. Martin. Oh. <laughs> What's Martin well, going well, to tell no, you? No, well, no, Martin didn't. But if it if it sounded, you know, like if if it sounded like one of the Latin languages, I probably would have gone, you know, with, with a different. No, it's a pretty normal also. English sounding name that many countries yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So good luck with it that. It didn't help. Uh, 
So yeah, written by Kim, inspired by the original series created by Ed Spielman, the reimagined Kung Fu, a quarter life crisis causes a quarter life a crisis. Quarter life crisis. <laughs> I love it. Hold on a second. Oh, so I need to investigate. So did I miss something here? Ah, yes. The, there was a photo further down of Greg Berlanti. I, mean, I don't remember mentioning Greg Berlanti. Is he producing this? Uh, Berlanti Productions is involved. <laughs> I'm shocked, I tell you. Shocked. Uh, so yes, a quarter life crisis, which I, I assume means about 20. <laughs> 20 to 25. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the CW, so standard. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the standard age for CW. I just mean, why would you call it a quarter life crisis? That's just so stupid. Yeah, I mean, you could just say an early midlife crisis. That's a thing people say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, causes young Chinese-American women to drop out of college and go on a life-changing journey to an isolated monastery in China. But when she returns to find her hometown overrun with crime and corruption, she uses her martial arts skills and Shaolin values to protect her community and bring criminals to justice, all while searching for the assassin who killed her Shaolin mentor and now targeting her. Uh, so I, I assume that meant when she comes back to America after being at the, the monastery for training, rather than yeah. going to the monastery and being like, oh, I need to protect people, because that'd be No, weird. no, when she comes back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so... They really want to replace Arrow, don't they? <laughs> I spent five years in a monastery. <laughs> and to save my turn, I must become someone else. I must become something else. I can, I can see it now. <laughs> I mean, if this was on a different play, if this was on like a cable network or something, I might be intrigued by the idea of a good action show with a badass lead. I think on the CW, though, I feel like it is just going to be like a, a tangential one of the superhero shows. It won't be one. It, 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 it won't be DC, but it'll be that kind of tone and feeling it, look. It sounds exactly like one of the, the superhero shows. Mine has any powers, but like that's that's why I said Arrow because it. It sounds a lot like Arrow did. Yeah, next up, uh, ABC's put in development Ghost, a one-hour drama from writer Justin Brett Gibson, who worked on Counterpart. Uh, Blindspot creator executive producer Martin Giro. Oh, he's looking at his back again! He's... Giro's getting You'll have to learn how to pronounce it properly now. Yeah. Uh, so, right, it's introduced by Brett Gibson. Ghost follows Elton Cleaver. Elton Cleaver, that's, that's a name. Uh, a once-celebrated CIA officer who was betrayed and left for dead by a shadowy organization embedded within the agency. Living under a new identity, Cleaver now uses this... He's not even using the name. Come on. <laughs> he's got the name Cleaver, he's not even using it. Unless that. that's the secret identity. Yeah, the new identity is Cleaver. Uh, sure. Cleaver now uses his skills to protect everyday people from threats beyond the law's reach. He's a vigilante then. All right, just say that. Yeah. God, just say that. He's a sp vigilante spy. <sighs> ABC is put in development Invisible, a thriller drama from Hand of God creator, oh god I remember that pilot, uh, Ben Watkins <laughs> I just had flashbacks. Rizad Rizani who works in The Gifted and 20th Century Fox um, so, written and executive produced by the Burn Notice duo of Watkins and Rizani why didn't you mention that in the other paragraph then? I did Burn Notice as well uh, which people did like, to be fair, I know people liked that show uh, so yeah, so written by them, Invisible is described as a sexy, high-octane thriller about an undercover federal agent going through an identity crisis as she struggles to find balance between her roles as a wife and mother and her calling as a high-risk law enforcement officer. That is definitely personal and professional lives. Connor it must is. drink. I, I am deciding which, which whiskey this week. Get on with it. Here's uh, a nice one. This might be the only one I get this week. We'll go with a nice Dalmore. All right, guess wagon. Uh, I mean, that's nice. I'm not gonna. I kind of forgot what the description was there. No, uh, the... it, it, it was another. It was another federal agent. Yes, bullshit. undercover, <laughs> dirty crisis. But yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yes. The secret agents are in this year. Apparently, secret, secret agents and friends comedies. I, f I feel like they decide every year what their theme's going to be for the year, even though no one actually cares or wants it. <laughs> And they all agree, like all the networks get together for a meeting and go, this is it this year, we're making it happen. It's like they all pay the same like, agency who like try who, who does like research and says this is what's in this year. And they all get the same information from the same company who just milks them all for money. And that's why we end up with the same, like, all five networks doing shows about the same themes. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the like the toy market, you know, how it comes up to Christmas that there's 
there's tons of the same style thing because someone's done the research and and you know they, they've gone this is the trend this is what's big this year and everyone tries to get their own one yeah yeah so the only explanation for it uh, abc has put in development happy birthday avery scott it's a unique title i'll give it that mm-hmm. uh, it's a high concept drama from writer producer rena uh, memun uh, i'm from... just gonna say what? if this isn't like a you, you know a groundhog day looping thing on her birthday i'm gonna be disappointed in the title okay that was a weird place to interrupt me i was doing a list of names uh anna oh, fricks yeah. next uh, valor and alex kurtzman's secret hideout production company uh the marks this marks Frick's third broadcast sale on this cycle. So okay, she's having a good, having a good year. I mean, maybe they'll, not, not, they'll may even get ordered to pilot, but uh, she's getting paid something at least. Yeah. Uh, so, Happy Birthday, Avery Scott is based on the book uh, "The Year We Turned 40 by Lisa Stinky and Liz Fenton. It's Avery Scott's birthday today, and if you were to believe her Instagram, everything about her life is perfect. But when her first of four ex-husbands throws her a surprise party that her own mother doesn't even attend, it sends Avery into an existential crisis prompting an emergency therapy session. Feeling semi-responsible for Avery's empty and meaningless life, the therapist sends Avery home with a calming tea to help her sleep. When she wakes up the next morning, it's 2001, and Avery has been given a second chance to reinvent herself and make her life more substantial than a hashtag. So... For a minute there, almost felt you were going to be right. I thought I was. Get, I thought I was getting it. No, no, no. This is basically forty-year-old becomes twenty-year-old. <laughs> you really had to think. How how long ago was two thousand one? Well, t- twenty twenty-two-year-old, maybe twenty-one. Well, actually, by the time this year, it was probably twenty-year-old. Yeah. No, 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 twenty-one. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. It'll be next. It'll be next September or October. So it'll be twenty twenty to two thousand one is nineteen years. So. It'll be 21, which makes sense, just for adult. And everyone thinks that 21 has been that prime age. Exactly. You're not too old yet, but you're an adult. Yeah. So, there you go. Um, uh, it, this this is going to be like, the, what was that Netflix movie? That was, you know, the, the super predictable time travel photo booth one. Oh, yeah, When We Met. Yeah. It's just that, but a TV show. Yes, but they can't get to the conclusion in 90 minutes. Because, I mean, that movie was watchable because it was 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was great, but it was fine. And Adam Devine uh, was doing his best to get Alexander Daddario. I mean, I mean it makes sense. It's, the, it's an admirable goal. The motivation's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anyway, next up, uh, ABC. Um, yeah, this is a weird one. ABC are doing a follow-up to Revenge, or they're developing one anyway, uh, which... It hasn't been gone that long, if I'm right in saying, right? It's been, a, it's been a little while, I think. I thought it had been quite a while, but maybe I'm wrong. But it only started in 2011, so when did it end? I don't think, uh, 2015, yeah. That's not that long ago. <laughs> I mean, in, in the TV cycle world, it's going to be like five years, like six years by the time it comes back. I think, this is a bit quick for me. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do the nostalgia reboot oh, of a show that was five years ago. Um, yeah. Uh, so... Revenge chronicles the story of a young Latinx immigrant. Uh, so this is a new version of it. Uh, it's got a Latinx twist, as the headline put it. Uh, guided by one of the series' original favourite characters, uh, she arrives in Malibu to exact revenge on a pharmaceutical dynasty whose insatiable greed lead to the murder of her biochemist mother, the destruction of her family, and a global epidemic. <laughs> I, I never watched Revenge. I know some people really liked it. Um, this kind of just sounds like yeah, it's revenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like what I'm familiar with as the core concept. So, sure. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, next up, NBC is put in development Quantum Spy, based on Spies are in <laughs> David uh, Ig- Ignatius. I'll say that is. Ignatius, uh, CIA thriller novel, The Quantum Spy, from writer Dave uh, Kalstein. Uh, who is working on Treadstone over at USA Network. Uh, so, Quantum Spy is a thriller centered around Harris Chang, newly promoted Chinese-American CIA officer. After America's top-secret quantum research lab is compromised, he's tasked with finding the traitor and ends up in the middle of a global conspiracy that leads him to uncover dark secrets from his own past. I saw the word quantum and got like mildly optimistic, and then 
The rest it's of just that another just, spy. It just says so boring and generic and everything. And I like spy things to a point, but come on. What are you going to do? Uh, next up, Fox is given a script commitment plus penalty to family ship. So we've got family in the comedies and family ship in the one hour side. Is one of them a spy? So one hour dramedy uh, written by Joe Harmon Fieldman. Oh, sorry, Feldman, sorry. Uh, it hails from Feldman and Jennifer Gwartz's Random Hill Productions. Uh, family ship? I.e. The internet term for... <laughs> so so there's a definition of where this comes from. The internet term for the relationship you have with your family. Have you heard this? No. The only explanation I have... And and this may be a good explanation, or I may be way off base. Mm -hmm. This is a Tumblr term, possibly, because <laughs> it sounds that that's the only thing I can think of that that could be a Tumblr thing. I mean, I'm on the internet a lot. I feel like I I'm up on the terms usually. I, yeah, I've not heard yeah, this but one. Tumblr is a world unto itself that I die am very unfamiliar with. Yeah, and they, they take away all the the, the, the X-rated material, so there's no point in going anymore. <laughs> that was pretty much the other reason. They got <laughs> did you see how much their numbers dropped when they did that? <laughs> I, I could just see like, Job from Earth's Development. We've made a huge mistake. <laughs> Genuinely, their numbers just fell off a cliff. Uh, all right, so fa family ship, step parents. Ex spouses, half siblings, and co parenting. The new modern family is a melting pot of first marriages, second families, and mixed ethnicities. Family Ship is a soapy, character based dramedy about the sprawling multi ethnic clan that you already said some of this, like many 21st century families. Was formed, yes, we know it's a modern family. Thing. Was formed in the wake of divorce and remarriage. <laughs> this is just saying the same thing over and over again. Was formed in the wake. Circles. Was formed in the wake of divorce and remarriage and navigates conflict, complications, and above all, love in its own unique way. You know what? I'm going to read this again. I want to analyze this I, paragraph. I, can, can I just say, that did a whole second description as if it was the second marriage. Like, <laughs> it was like the same thing, but just I, a little bit different. I want to read that again, because I feel like it repeated a lot. Of that. I want to just go through that slowly. So, it st starts with a list. Step-parents, ex-spouses, half-siblings, co-parenting. The new modern family is a melting pot of first marriages, second families, and mixed ethnicities. I already think there's a little bit of a repetition between that first list and the way it ends. But yeah, get... but by telling me, oh, you know, first marriages, second marriages, and then, yeah, well, we've got step-parents, so sure. Yes. But I'll, I'll give them up until that point. And then the second half starts. Family Ship is a soapy, character-based dramedy about the sprawling multi-ethnic clan. I mean, you kind of already said that with the, the last part with the uh, mixed ethnicities. Uh, yep. And then, like many 21st century families, again, modern families, uh, yep. was formed in the wake of divorce and remarriage. Again, you said first marriages and second families. Like You, you, you said this already. Yeah. Uh, that was the most... That is literally twice as long as it needed to be. And that's being generous. All right, next up. CBS has put development... <laughs> uh... Oh, is this multiple shows in this one? It is. Uh, drama's van Vanishing Point from writer Breen Fraser, who worked in Criminal Minds, and The Honourable from Everybody Hates Chris co-creator, Ali Lee Roy and Michelle Amore. So, Vanishing Point revolves around a cavalier but brilliant uh, behavioural psychologist and his methodical FBI agent ex-wife. Of course. <laughs> of course there's a spy in it. <laughs> who, is, who is forced to retain on a... Mis I don't know if every FBI agent has a okay, spy. Okay, no, they're not, but they, they're going in on the, the, the government agent, sure. I should say. Uh, they're forced to retain on a missing persons case that is in fact might be the spark they need to rekindle the relationship and family to locate their own teenage son who disappeared years before. Yeah, I'd count that. Take a drink. Uh, that just sounds like a convoluted mess, to be honest. Um, next up, Chicago mayoral <laughs> drama, The Honourable, is written by Leroy and Armour. Uh, it is The Honourable, the young, idealistic new mayor of Chicago finds that winning the election seems like a cakewalk compared to the challenges of running one of the most politically fraught cities in the world, balancing her own tangled personal life and navigating the old rivalry with a powerful family. Oh, just before... I was... I was mm. Mm. 
That was balancing two personal things as opposed to it was personal it was. professional. But anyway. I thought I was going to talk about the job, which I mean, it kind of is related to the job, but it, it did it on a personal angle. Um, what I was just going to say is, it's Ice Town the show. <laughs> Whoop! There it is. <laughs> Um, that's a Parson Wreck reference for anyone that get it. Uh, CBS is put into development. Uh, is this another multiple one? Uh, <laughs> look at it. It's put in development dramas Near Death from writer uh, Chase creator Jennifer Johnson and St. Bernie's from in, 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 Instinct creator Instinct is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Instinct. 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 Uh, from Michael Oroch. Oroch. Probably Oroch. Oroch. Rah. I just rah. I'm gonna go with the. Yes, we get it. You're Scottish. The ultra Scottish thing. Uh, near death, following a horrible accident, a young woman's near death experience leads to inexplicable visions that prove surprisingly useful in helping her detect her father solve crimes, and we also reveal dark secrets that threaten to permanently fracture their family. Do you know what? I actually think this should be a new drinking rule. First of all, that was personal and professional. So that yeah. was personal and professional. Yeah, so you can take a drink for that. Place. But I'm going to propose a new rule because there's another thing I'm noticing is creeping in fairly often. Which is? Is how many times something will reveal a dark secret in either a family or the person's past themselves. Okay, going forward, we'll, we'll go with that one. Aye, both. We're not giving up the Aye. person professional. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I meant going yeah. forward. Isn't, it doesn't count here because we're only deciding it now. Sure, sure. But that's, that's at least two or three that we've had already this episode. So I, I, I think that yeah. one also counts now. Yeah. That's coming up a lot. Uh, so then St. Bernie's uh, revolves around an idealistic but immature doctor who, when a small town's hospital is forced to close, leads a determined group of locals to co-opt a diner-turned-veterinarian clinic into a medical practice to deliver much-needed care to their community. All right. Rogue. Rogue. Thrilling. Doctor's office. There you go. And then the final story of the week. The so suspense is killing the me. creator of Madame Secretary, which is actually just wrapping up its sixth and final season, somehow a show I've never heard of, but whatever. Yeah, I was going to say, what? Uh, CBS has put in development Clues, a drama based on the Israeli series from uh, Hall and Madame Secretary executive producer David Gray. So based on an Israeli show. Clues is written by Hall and Gray, based on the Israeli series created by Ruti Rudner and Yonatan Kognak. Uh, and produced by Atza Productions. Uh, when a private investigator goes missing... Oh, that's, that's, that's ironic. <laughs> but irony there. Yeah. When a private investigator goes missing, his socialite wife and his blue-collar protege are forced together to solve the mystery of his disappearance while also desperately trying to save the business. But each of the, the women's... Oh, so they're both women, actually. Uh, but each of the women holds a secret that could jeopardize their budding friendship in the pursuit of truth. Much like a lot of the things that get close to person professionally, if that is eerily close to the new rule we just made up, it's close, it is. but it's not I'm, quite I'm, there. I'm debating, does, is that like close enough? Like we can't, you know, personal professional, it doesn't have to be that exact. Yes, line. yes. Is that close enough? Because it wasn't, it didn't say dark secret or anything like that. True. I don't know. Anything about a secret from the past? Or like, All right. Uh, is it secret from the past? Is that the key thing? Yes, yes. Fine, fine. I want a sponsorship. Well, Dynamics I think it's either a secret in the past or a secret that could completely, like, destroy their life or destroy their family or okay. whatever. This was a bit of both. Yeah. So, there you to go. To be fair, most secrets are from the past. But, like, just by the nature of time. Sometimes they, they, they say it, though. Sometimes they say a secret <laughs> from the past. They do, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to argue that sometimes it's uh, a secret from the, the future. That, that would be way more interesting. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all right i mean that basically wraps up the up the show uh mandalorian's coming this week that's a bit all i've got to tell you yeah is that, is there anything else or is that it i think that's it but i mean i'll double check <laughs> no just just mandalorian although i'm seeing here you have something that looks like a netflix show on our schedule that i know nothing about I don't know anything about it yet either. I just I, I noted it down to look into it later. Uh, okay, fine. I, I will say no more. So, so now you've brought it up and you made. Well, I just assumed you'd put it there for a good reason, not just as a as a reminder to yourself. <laughs> Sorry, look, for just that. just go with it. All right, just go with it. 
So, all right, fine. But the, the, there may or may not be a, a Netflix show covered later in the week. <laughs> that, that, that fair? I think that's fair. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's TV news. Um, you can, of course, let us know what you thought of any of the news items this week. Uh, in the comments, you can like and subscribe. Ding the bell on YouTube. Make sure you get those notifications. You can uh, buy merchandise. Actually, I, I don't. I don't say this often, but uh, if I remember, I'll put the little graphic at the bottom that says, "Here, look at some of these hoodies." Uh, but you can buy some merchandise at our shop too. Uh, not shop too. Shop. That's a gaming store. Uh, Spread shirt is the store that we sell <laughs> shirts and hoodies and stuff on. And uh, there's links to both the US and UK stores in the description. Uh, we mentioned Patreon earlier, of course. So make sure you go and. Uh, uh, go and have a look there. Um, but yeah, uh, but otherwise that is us. Uh, check out, you know, we have our stuff. Check out the movie podcast, Screams After Midnight, horror movie podcast, uh, horror movies every week. Uh, the Atomic Cinema Experiment, sci-fi movie podcast. That's every week too. Um, these are fun things to check out. Yeah. They are. Trust me, try to, if you've only watched content from Mail Fuzz TV, that's, that's me and Connor, I guarantee you, your life is going to open up when you actually watch something that Connor's not on. You're going to be shocked at how much better it can be. Uh huh. Yeah. There's a lot less whiskey on the other shows. <laughs> to 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 steal Sky, uh, their catchphrase: "Believe in better." <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're going with. That's what I'm going with. Yes. All right. Well, I I just want to say. I am very excited to check out The Mandalorian. I'm very excited to force Pete into watching I, it. Well, I don't, I'm I, very excited for him to admit that he doesn't hate it. Yeah. I mean, I could have used McDonald's, but I didn't think I'm loving it. But It was going to fit the, the, the moment. No, no, it didn't. Yeah. Could have just do it. More, Wait, more, more of a command than a, than a... You know, than, than, than how you'll feel, but... Anyway, that is that is the show. That is almost cancelled TV news for the week. Thank you very much. This is the third week in a row we've recorded on Sunday and put it out on Monday. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be permanent going forward, but it's just the way it's fell for the last few weeks. So, um, so if that's ruined your schedules and when you normally listen to it, I apologise, but uh, this is where it's been falling for the last little while. Uh, but that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. And uh, have you got any... Diplomatic immunity!